planet Zerzerung in the Nephilim sector, a barren rocky moon with little indigenous life, but pockmarked across a region of open plateaus are strange geologic areas that flare with exotic radiation and strange energies. These pulses disrupt Vox communications, but also strangely invigorate organic tissue. Tech priests have been sent to investigate the phenomena and to protect them in a galaxy of relentless conflict and unseen dangers, a company of Katachan Imperial Guard. Sly Marbo surveys the open, desolate plains and growls at this stark contrast to the dense, welcoming arms of the lethal jungles of the homeworld. The only cover is a nearby derelict colony. Age and the environment has cracked its walls and collapsed most of the structures. Only a few ragged fingers of wall and tower remain, pointing up at the sky and to the colonists who deserted them so many years ago. While it offers some shelter in war, unfortunately, the fleeing Imperial settlers had chose to ward their home against Xenos, pillagers and scavengers, and had set mines and booby traps throughout. Even after all this time, many were still active and, as the first scouts had discovered, still exceedingly effective. This Sly could appreciate. An explosive device had splashed one scout across the side of the building, creating a vast collage of red rent flesh and shreds of green cloth. Another had been cleanly decapitated by a spring-loaded blade, his severed head rolling out of town down the main street approach in the most graphic manner to warn against further trespass. Warning alarms suddenly echo from the survey outpost. The tech priests bellow in startlement as the Katachan troopers bury lasgun butts into their shoulders and train their sights out in every direction from the encampment. The warning was breaching the distortion and the data it carried was dire. The Great Devourer was here, not for the scant biomass on offer, but rather attracted by the strange waves of energy that made skin tingle and the mind to race with strange and stark thoughts. If the swarm could somehow feed on this power, they would emerge from this sector invigorated. But there was hope. Adeptus Astartes of the Nova Marines chapter were already in system, a strike force to stop the Tyranids feeding here and enhancing their war for this sector. The Katachan would have to delay them. Victory was unlikely, but if they could see teleport homers in the midst of the foe, the Nova Marines could penetrate the distortion and materialize in the midst of the swarm to shatter their lines and devastate their numbers. However, Orspec readings indicate that the Tyranids were descending on the old colony, seeking cover for their beachhead, unaware of the inherent danger hidden there. But the aliens had the numbers to squander. In order to achieve victory, the Katachan would have to brave the hazards and move in and go street to street, eradicating the Xenos threat as they went, placing homers and praying that the God Emperor is with them and that Astartes would appear to deliver them prior to utter destruction. Suddenly, a transport hurtles across the sky, banking sharply and settling amidst curling aerial patterns of dust. Slamming to the ground, the rear hatch falls open and the sound of hooves emerge as the Lord Solar himself trots out. He pauses and then the cybernetic limbs of his steed kick at the air as it rears mightily and from its cybernetic throat comes a booming whinny that is part animal, part blades scraped against metal, a noise that resonates in the bones of the guardsmen. Leontus draws his power sword and indicates the ruined town. The Katachan look to the heroes in their midst, Sly Marbo and Iron Hand Strachan. Their unwavering expressions succumb to an almost imperceptible nod of acknowledgement. With no order or word required, inspired beyond measure, the jungle fighters of Katachan charge their las guns, and with their artillery and tanks rumbling forth in support, they follow the Lord Solar and move into the crucible of battle. I'll be bringing in a couple of Harrispects and a couple of Exocrine, a Neuro Tyrant that will be leading a trio of Tyrant Guard and giving their crushing claws plus one to hit and plus one to wound if the target is battle shot. A couple of Carnifex with Stranglethorn Cannon will be led by the infamous Old One-Eye. A Hive Tyrant with Stranglethorn and Lash Whip and Bone Sword, and it will have the enhancement of Adaptive Biology to ignore wound loss on a 5-up. 4-up if it's been wounded already. 
three Venom Throat for the Foul Spores and a unit of three Zoanthrope. And another one to try and spread around Synapse and the Invon save and their tank busting group blasts. Three Hive Guard with Shock Cannon, three Tyrant Guard with Crushing Claws assigned to defend the Hive Tyrant, and five Barb Gaunts to hamper movement, and finally a swarm of 20 Hormagaunts. Two Basilisks with Earth Shakers, a Hydra, a Chimera, a Shadow Sword, Tank Commander, six Borgrin, three Scout Sentinels, three squads of ten Catachan, and Slime Arbo, Iron Hand Strachan, and the Lord Solar. Deployment is Crucible of War, we roll off and I go with Attacker. We chuck out some tape measures to show us our deployment zones. Primary mission is Sites of Power, three victory points for each objective controlled, and an extra three victory points if there's a character on it. Mission rule, Maelstrom of Battle. So, we ditch this one and draw two new ones. If one is Chilling Rain, we draw three new ones. Okay, let's see what we have. Vox Static, ouch. Command point reroll cost double. Minefields, roll a six on the advance and you trip a landmine and the unit takes a mortal wound. Bloody hell, daylight charge across the minefield, red dwarf style, here we go. Secondaries, we're going fixed this time. The Catachan have deployed teleport homers at the end of their turn if within my deployment zone or six inches from the middle, they chuck down a homer if they don't shoot or charge. Center is two victory points, and my deployment is four victory points. And cleanse. Sit on an objective, abstain from shooting and charging, and two VP for one, four VP for two. The Tyranids, we get cleanse as well and secure no man's land. Two victory points for controlling an objective in no man's land and five victory points for two. Deployment. I am choosing hyper aggression as my hyper adaptation for critical hits, auto wound vehicles, because I'm going to need it. The pair of Carnifex on the starting line, ready to make their rush for the enemy, while chucking out Stranglethorn cannon shots, spitting seeds that send hooked tendrils out in all directions, ripping apart the target before their chitin-plated bulk slams into the foe. Tank Commander on the other side looking to intercept, Old One-Eye, didn't he die last season? Wrong, he's back, he's bad, and he's super super mad. Lord Solar by the tank commander, ready to chuck out his orders all over the place. Barb Gaunt in the ruin on the second floor, a Hydra in cover in the back, and Exocrine in obscuring in case I don't get first turn. I don't need these bullet magnets being shot off the board before they can even put a dent in the enemy heavy armor. Scout Sentinels with Plasma, ready to dash forward and laze choice targets for the rest of the army to ignore indirect penalties and also reroll ones to hit. Hive Guard on the second floor, six inches up, they're in cover but visible. However, I want that plunging fire. Every point of AP is vital against the guard and I don't want to lose the plus one to hit for being stationary by having them move into position out of obscuring turn one. I'm hoping the Carnifex will be the more alluring target. Basilisk in obscuring to chuck those earth shakers indirect and slow up infantry. Venom throat on the floor beneath the hive guard to get them in the foul spore bubble and the barb dogs as well. And also in the prime location to dash out onto those no man's lands objectives or intercept any moves on this location. The Shadow Sword. Ye dads, that's a big beast. And that volcano cannon is going to be hell on my monsters. A chance of doing devastating wound, D3 plus 1 shots, strength 24, AP minus 5, damage 12. The Adeptus Mechanicus weren't messing around with this one, but you know what? Oh, fuck you, Mars. Three Zoanthrope lurking in the back with everything else to grant the emergency last ditch invon save and also provide synapse. Another Basilisk at the edge of the board, Neuro Tyrant on the far side, the idea being to get on that objective in cover and get some sights of power going. A squad of Catachan on the right side of the board, looking for a quick dash forward, but hopefully no sixes because of all those mines. Voxcaster, Flamer, the usual menu. Harrispex in the middle looking to make a run on those tasty Catachan, nom nom nom. Another squad of jungle fighters on the starting line with Iron Hand Strachan leading them, and another Harrispex to make a move to devour those guys as well. 
iron hand rocks against monsters. But let's see if I can devour him like Dennis Hopper eating a watermelon and then spit out that bionic arm like a seed. Three brain bugs between the Harrispex to give them the invuln and synapse as they make their dash into the open. Another squad ready to go. Three tyrant guard with the Muro tyrant looking to see if them being enhanced in melee is worth it with the brain bug. Engine seer with the shadow sword. Crap. That thing's gonna be getting an invuln and repairs now. We are totally fucked. And not just fucked. Like elephant dick, pound in the ass, no reach around. Another exocrine lurking for now while waiting to see who goes first. Sly Marbo ties on his red bandana, grabs his blade, and drops in next to the squad on the left. Walking Hive Tyrant in the very back there to stay safe. Then emerge to start shooting with the Stranglethorn Cannon, and if things go very badly, to sneak forward and get stuck in. Mostly I need him around for that free strat per turn, and because Adrenal Surge cost two, he's gonna be a gold mine of command points. Chimera Transport on the front line with a belly full of jungle fighters. Three Tyrant Guard with the Hive Tyrant to assist on any move into the fray he needs to make. And a squad of three Bulgrin ready with their Womp Sticks. And 20 Hormogorks by the Harrispex to make a mad dash into the fray. And another squad of three Bulgrin. And I guess we have the exact same number of units to deploy because that's it. We finished at the exact same moment. Cool. Katachan win the roller. So let's do this thing! We'll kill anything that moves. A command point each. The Katachan get an extra from the Moon Solar. The Sentinels make their scout move towards the objective. And the Katachan jungle fighters also make their scout move as well. Jogging six inches into no man's land. Moving. One squad moves onto the middle ruin, the others take the one on the left and get some guys on the objective. Tank Commander and the Lord Solar gallop and rumble forth. The Chimera trundles 10 inches and gets a few tracks on the objective. Bullgreens advance on Roller 6. One of them trips the mine. But where a normal guardsman would be shredded by the blast, the Bullgreen just gets a little siege and strength and just continues onwards onto the edge of the objective. The Shadow Sword grinds forward with the Engine Seer in tow. The Sentinels claim the objective. No Psychic anymore, so on to shooting. The Tank Commander is going for the Harrispex down the line. Two Strength 10 hits against Toughness 11. One Wounding hit, AP minus one, a four up, and the Nasty Beast saves. Melters are out of range, and the Laz Cannon misses. Hunter Killers from the Scout Sentinels into my brain bugs. Two hit, strength 14 versus toughness 5, two wounded hits, and we'll be going with the invuln now. One goes through, d6 damage, a 1, but they do laze the brain bugs for an army wide bonus to hit. Overcharged plasma, four attacks, three hits, three wounded hits, AP minus 3, one goes through, for two more damage. But let's roll for that hazardous, and two ones. Wow, the Catagen are just tripping over everything. Three wounds on each of them. Basilisks, Basilisks, Basili. Anyway, following the Sentinels targeting, they are going for the Zoanthrope. They get plus one to hit for being heavy and not moving. Minus one to hit for the Foul Spores. No penalty for indirect and re-rolling ones. Five hits from the Earth Shaker. Four hits, strength eight, three wounded hits. Invuln soaks up two, two damage. Another Earth Shaker to exploit Blast on the Hormogorks, but this one gets none of the central bonuses. Three hits, all wound, going with the six up for being near the Zoanthrope, three perish. Chimera, Heavy Bolter and Multi-Laser into the Carnifex, along with another Hunter Killer. Hunter Killer Missile, misses. Lasers, one hit, nope. Bolter, three attacks, all miss. Oof, Hatterjan are having a definite off day. The Jungle Fighters, two squads all levy their Laz weapons and flamers at the Carnifex bearing down on them. Fumble from me here, 
that minus one to hit doesn't apply to monsters, but it is only on last guns, so the odds of them doing something was remote anyways, so not too much of an effect on the result. Shadow Sword, Falters Galore, on the Hive Guard, minus one to hit, sustained hits, sixes get an extra hit, and Twin Link re-roll to wound. Five hit, two re-rolls to wound, so five wounded hits, AP minus one, reduced to zero for the cover, two damage each, one hive guard is deleted. Laz cannons, miss. Volcano cannon on the Harrispex. Um, I spend the command point to activate rapid regeneration. It is within synapse, so five up to ignore wound loss, and it has the six up invuln from the zoanthrope as well. But still, I'm pretty much expecting a Tyler Durdening. Four shots, only two of them hit. Strength 24, minus five AP, okay, in Vuln it is. One of them makes it. Score! Okay, rolling to ignore the 12 wound loss. Not a single five or six, lame. We did forget that criticals become mortals, but I don't think either of the hit rolls were sixes anyway. <laughs> a command point each. The wounded Harrispex makes a battle shock test. It's within range of the Zoanthrope, so 3d6, and it passes. So it gets to keep its objective control 4 versus the Chimera's objective control of 2. Does the squad inside count though? We'll have to look into that, but if you know, dear viewer, drop a comment and save us all that effort. Thank you. Anyway, Khan effects move forward and I mess up and put Old One-Eye in the middle, where if I had put him on the edge, he'd be on the objective as a character getting an extra three victory points. Wounded Harrispect moves into the central objective and towards the Chimera. The other one moves towards the Sentinels and the Zoanthrope flute between them to keep them in that Invuln field that served so well against that cannon. For the purposes of the Hydra, which targets flying things, basically for my army, if it don't have legs, take it as red, it's flying. The Neuro Tyrant moves onto the objective with the guard in front of it and the Tyrant guard start a cleanse. The Hive Tyrant sneaks forward a little. I need to target everything I have at that giant bloody tank. Exocrine, time to try and get that Shadow Sword. Engine Seer puts his blessing on the Chimera to protect it and the crew sitting inside enjoying the AC with an invuln. First one, five shots, toughness 13, four wounding hits, AP minus three, five ups to save. All go through, three damage each. Symbiotic targeting now kicks in, and like the Sentinels, I have painted the Shadow Sword and get to re-roll ones to hit with the rest of the barrage. The second Exocrine, nine shots, re-rolling ones of which there are none, fives to wound, one wound in hit, save. Team one Zoanthrope, three focused warp blasts, six is auto wound from the hyper aggression, one six, the others fail, AP minus three, armor makes it. Team 2, all foul. Tank busting, they weren't. Hive Tyrant, Stranglethorn Cannon, five shots, one wounding hit, AP minus two, saved. Hive Guard, Shock Cannon, so powerful, they even take out the tripod. Three wounding hits, AP minus two because of the plunging fire, one save, one goes through, three wounds. And now for a little absurdity. The Harrispex launches its gross grasping tongue at the Chimera. Successfully wounds. AP minus two, saves. The guard now opt for armored might to protect that massive points investment. Two command points to reduce incoming damage by one. Carnifex with their Stranglethorn cannon on jumbo. Two auto wounds, four wounding hits, AP minus one. Two fells, both are damaged two, taking down to one each. Bard Gaunts on the Catachan squad in the ruins. Actually, no, screw it. Let's go for the tank. But the Armoured Might strat says minus one damage, but not minimum of one like all the others do. So do one damage weapons have no effect? Well, five wounding hits, no AP, it's a moot point, they saved them all. We'll have to look into this one for next time, but again, if you have the answer, please drop it in the comments for us. Second Harrispex Tongue on the Chimera. If I get a six, I can go for that Engine Seer with precision. Nah. Toughness nine, one hit, AP minus two, Invon save from the Engine Seer makes it. On to charge him. The Carnifex. 
their hooves pound the battlefield and they make the charge and in they go. Let's see what Old One Eye can do in 10th edition. The wounded Harispex engages the Bulgrin and the Chimera. Maybe not the wisest move, but at least it gets them all engaged and clogs them up. The Homogaunts charge and flood around the Sentinels to scratch and scratch their paintwork. The other Harispex also charges the Chimera. My freebie stratagem is going on Adrenal Surge because it costs two command points. So the Carnifex and the unwounded Harispex auto wound vehicles on fives and sixes. Got carried away here, forgot the 12 inch range. I need to start getting my Hive Tyrant moving in, staying in cover, making sure he can touch my vital units. Although, the Exocrine are generally within two feet of each other, so maybe him staying back and focusing on Adrenal Surge each turn to buff these boys is the way. Save command points just for rapid regen and the other stuff. Anywho, a Carnifex on the squad and the other and Old One-Eye on the tank commander. Old One-Eye goes with strikes. Five hits, none of them are auto wounds, but they all make the wound roll. AP minus three, four go through, D6 plus one each, 17 wounds, and that is the tank commander demolished. Damn, old one eye hits like a wrecking ball when he's all juiced up. Taking out the tank it deprives the other Carnifex of a target. I had no idea he was gonna do that well. However, we do forget death befitting an officer for a chance to fight on death. But we're both getting used to our data cards because it turns out I also missed the re-rolling to hit on the Carnifex bequeathed by Old One-Eye. The thing with no depth perception helps you take aim. Go figure. Anyway, Carnifex, Scything Talons on the squad. Six wounding hits, AP minus two, so six kills. Paraspex on the ball grin. Five wounding hits, AP minus one. All go through, two each, 10 damage, shoveling claws. Three wounding hits, AP minus two, seven damage. The other Harispex chomps on the Chimera. Two auto wounds, three wounding hits, AP minus one. Two go through, two damage each. Shoveling claws, three hits, two of them wound, AP minus two, one save, one foul, and measly two damage. I would command point reroll, but not for two CP, thanks to Vox static. Hormagaunts, oops, forgot endless swarm. What the hell, command point, back to full strength they go. First batch of 20. Two auto wounds, six is to wound, so three. AP minus one, two go through. Second batch, five wounding hits. Three go through, taking one of them to one wound. And the last batch, three wounding hits, two saves, but the last one destroys a sentinel, but he does not deadly demise. Fighting back, five catachern on the Carnifex, close combat weapons. One hit, fails to wound. Ogrins, they hit, but fail to wound. The Chimera, Armoured Tracks, two hits, fell to wound. Sentinel Chainsaws, twos to wound, three hits, three kills. Knives out, boys. Command Point, and another one from Lord Solar. Battle shock for the squad fighting the Carnifex. They fail, so they lose objective control. But they only had one dude on it anyway, so the Carnifex objective control of three would have taken it anyways. Orders, Iron Hand can chuck out two, so front rank fire, second rank fire on those in the ruin, and fixed bayonets on the Bulgrin tackling the wounded Harispex. Lord Solar can chuck out three, and take aim for himself, Sly Marvo, and fix bayonets for the remnants of the squad. The Chimera occupants disembark. The vehicle hasn't moved, so those leaving stay within three inches, not in engagement, but then they can do their thing. So a squad of Katachan leap from the rear of the vehicle and enter the fray. The Hydra edges forward to get a bead on the Neuro Tyrant. The Shadow Sword backs up a bit, and the Armoured Sentinels fall back. I wondered as to the logic of this, because surely I can just move forward and charge them again. But then, there's all this strange whistling noise from above, like, who has the kettle on in the middle of a battle? Seven shells coming in, four auto wounds, and another success. AP minus two, six up involved from the brain bugs, and no luck. Bits of Hormagord rain down over the area. The next shot loses a little blast now that the Hormagorts are down a few, but a nasty roll results in no more casualties. 
The Hydra twin link auto cannon with a whopping 72 inch range. Because its target is flying, there's a re-roll to hit, and this is rather important because the first roll is nothing but misses. But the re-roll, two auto wounds and another gets it with the twin linked re-roll to wound. One goes through doing three damage on the tyrant guard, and it throws its hunter missile into them, but armor blocks it. Engine Seer hauls out his pistol and fires on the Hormigons, but misses. Auto Shotgun from Iron Hand Strachan, he hits but fails to wound. Plasma Pistol, Overcharge, Strength 8, fails to wound, but also fails to explode. Sly Marbo's Ripper Pistol into the Carnifex, dreadful roll, fails to wound. Squad in the Ruins, 16 shots they moved, so no auto wound this round. Five wounding hits on the barbed gaunts, two go through, killing one of them. Flame up, six shots, four of them wound, another gaunt is incinerated, and another is badly burned. Plasma pistol, it wounds, but is saved. The recently disembarked squad open fire, get two wounds, and kill the seared barbed gaunt. The flame up, the nozzle may be a little clogged, because only one squirt's worth of Prometheum emerges and fails to wound. You failed to maintain your weapon, son. Shadow Sword on the Exocrine. I give it rapid regeneration to try and soak up some of the Volcano Cannon. They are in Synapse, so it'll be fives and sixes. Only two shots, and fortunately, only one hits. It wounds, AP minus five, the six up invuln fails. 12 damage, and rapid regeneration soaks up all save five of them. Twin Heavy Bolters, 9 shots, 1 wound in hit, AP minus 1, armor fails, another gaunt perishes, Laz Cannon kills another. On to charging, everyone gets stuck in successfully, so let's see those machetes in action. However, we forgot the Catachan thing of charging gets them plus 1 strength and plus 1 AP. Squad on the Carnifex, 1 wound and it goes through, a blade gets crammed through those chitin plates. Lord Solar, the hooves don't hit. Conquest, six attacks, three wounding hits, minus two AP, six damage. Sly Marbo and his Venom Blade, five attacks. The master of martial combat fails to do anything this round. The squad, one wounding hit on the Harrispex, it's down to the dregs of its wounds, but it does save. Iron Hand goes to try and finish it off. Six attacks with his anti-monster bionic arm with devil's claw. Three wounding hits, AP minus two. Iron Hand Strachan cuts down the Harrispex. And looks like we forgot to do the Chimera's attacks this turn. But hey, it's all good because you know what else we forgot? Me doing my fight back. It's all good, man. <laughs> A command point each, I spend it immediately on Endless Swarm and restore 5 gaunts. Venom Throat float forward out of the building. The Zoanthrope all move forward to get things within their invulnerability bubble, and Synapse in case I need more rapid regeneration if I fail to take down the Shadow Sword this turn. Hive Tyrant and its guard move up. The guard in the ruin emerge to attack the sentinels, and the neuro tyrant floats out with them, staying on the site to gather power for victory points. Exocrine on the Shadow Sword, and I'm going to use the Hive Tyrant's free strat for Adrenal Surge to give both Exocrine auto wound on fives and sixes. First one is a real letdown, one auto wound in hit, AP minus three, fails to save though, so three damage, down to four wounds it goes, but symbiotic targeting is now up. The second one has four shots re-rolling ones, another wound in hit, AP minus three, fails the save, the shadow sword is now on one wound, hive guard, anti-vehicle, open up, but the tank saves, zoanthropes, Focused Warp Blasts, two wounding hits, AP minus three, both go through and down goes the Jumbo War Machine, and he fells Deadly Demise. Carnifex with their cannon shooting out of combat, six shots on the Basilisk, Toughness nine, one wounding hit, it saves. Hive Tyrant on the Hydra, three shots, Toughness nine, fives up to hit, fails. Neuro Tyrant tries to blast the Sentinels. They save the usually measly handful of shots I get. I think I'm done with this thing. Its damage is just too swingy, and I always roll really low on the attacks. Goddamn 2d6. 
The Tyrant Guard charge and are enhanced by the Brain Bug. Crushing Claws, 5 Wounding Hits, AP minus 2, 4 go through, 2 damage each, one of them goes down, the last drops to 5 wounds. Venom Throat make the 6 inch charge and their anti-infantry tendrils go to work. 5 Wounding Hits, AP 0, 3 go through, tearing apart 3 hapless guardsmen. Harrispect on the Chimera, 7 Wounding Hits, AP minus 1, 3 go through, doing 2 damage each, and down to 1 wound it goes. The Carnifex going for Lord Solar, 1 Wounding Hit, AP minus 2, the Inborn soaks it up. Old One Eye goes for Slime Marbo, 1 Wounding Hit, AP minus 3, fails to save, Two damage. The other Carnifex lashes out, skewering the last remnants of the squad with its talons. Fighting back, Lord Solar jams Conquest into the Carnifex. Four wounding hits, AP minus two from the Power Sword, six damage. He slays one and then wounds the other. Deadly Demise does not go off. Slime Marbos envenom the blade into the Carnifex, AP minus one, and two damage goes through. Chimera's armoured tracks, no luck. Catachan on the Venom Throat, hacking and slashing at the tentacles that are just pouring in through the windows of the ruin. One wounding hit, armour fails. Sentinel chainsaws, two hits, snake eyes on the wound roll. This is what I call a target-rich environment. Command point from Lord Solar atop the normal one, and because this one has pretty much gone the way of the first attack in Starship Troopers, we're gonna call it here. I've tried the Neuro Tyrant on its own, and I've tried it with the Tyrant Guard. It just doesn't do well, so I think I'll be dropping that one for now. Exocrine did grand, Old One Eye was brilliant, I'm definitely going to give him another go, especially now that I've remembered the reroll to hit. Harrispecs are excellently tanky and do a lot of damage, definitely that tongue is an unexpected bonus. But for MVP this time, I've got to go with the Zoan Throat. Synapse to push rapid regeneration into territory where it can diminish even volcano cannon fire. That Invon save may be a long shot, but can save a beastie from certain death on a jammy roll. Plus, their anti tank focus blast do oodles for their points. An excellent game. Thoroughly enjoyed. Looking forward to more. <laughs>